First into the tank, a husband and wife team who've developed quite an attachment. It's a really huge step for us to take our product nationally, so this opportunity is definitely huge for us. Hi Sharks, I'm Peter Slikowski. And I'm Christina Stokowski. We're husband and wife and founders of Hipster. We're seeking a $250,000 investment for a 20% share in our business. Bottled drinks. They've become a part of our everyday lives. We use them at work, while going for walks, travelling and everywhere else in between. Which is great. Hydration is the key to good health. But the problem is, they're annoying. No one likes holding them. They can get warm in your hands, can leak in your bag. Most of the time, can't remember where we left them last. That's why we created the Hipster Bottle Holder, and it's as easy to use as this. Our bottle holders are the perfect accessory to keep you hydrated and hands-free. I'd like to hand some out and we'll show you how they work. Thanks, Peter. I get two. You get two, yeah, we, yeah, we all get two. two. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so they're really easy to use. You just squeeze the two tabs together and they lock under the neck oh. of your bottle. So you can actually attach them anywhere. You see on our model here, on his backpack. So he can easily go from his backpack to his waist. Saves him having to take the backpack off to constantly get his bottle out or ask for his partner or friend to get the bottle out. Right. Now, this, like, this is obviously not a new idea. There's bottle holders that have been around for years. Sure. So how is your product different to what's in the marketplace today? Um, it's unique look, the ease of use, and its ability to be versatile. OK, how is it unique? The, the positive lock of the spring still all the way around the neck. Um, the fact that you can wear it on multiple things, be it on yourself, on a backpack. People put them on the back of the aeroplane seat when they yep. travel. They put it on their luggage, on the back of the car seats for the kids in the back. There's many ways you can use it. What is your experience? What, what's your background? I'm just a truck driver. Just um, accounts and finance is my background. Yeah, just had an idea and ran with it. Basically, we do everything ourselves. So you did the industrial design? Um, with another company, we had a chat. Because it's very elegant. You've Thank done you. a great job. We also Thank have um, granted patents, both here in Australia and in the US. Yes. How many years you've been trading for? This is our third year third that we're year? trading and for. And could you talk sales, please? Yeah, sure. During the last quarter, our sales have been $20,000. Um, over the last two years, um, we've reached 80000 So in year sales. one was? Um, year one was about um, 17000 Yep. Year, year two? two was thirty five, and we've just, um, in this last quarter, done 20000 20,000 in the last quarter, so you've obviously seen a bit of a, an uptick. We have, definitely. What caused that? Um, during the last quarter, we have spent a lot of time on our promotional branding. Right. So a lot of that um, sales has come from our corporate branding where other companies can put their logo. That's to print what, like, stuff on here? Correct, Correct. yeah. Well done. Well done. Christina, how much do they cost to make? Between um, $1.50 to $2.50. I'm confused. You said it's between. Isn't there a definitive answer? Well, it depends on our order quantity. So, obviously, if we're ordering 50,000 units, the unit price is going to be less right. than Correct. an order of 1,000. Yes. What quantity are you currently ordering? You? Um, at the moment, we order low quantities because we don't want to hold Please. excess stocks. What, what currently are you um, currently? We order less than 5,000. Have you made inquiries as to if you did get 50000 what would they we, cost? We've got prices. So can you give me some idea of how far it could, how, how cheap it could get? Um, less than 50 cents. You wholesale it for? We wholesale it for around um, $3.95. Um, we retail them for $12.95. I'm confused about the valuation. So you're obviously not making any profit at this point. Correct. But you're valuing it at 1.25? Correct. Could you explain where you get to that valuation place? Yes, definitely. So that's how we valued our business is within the growth potential. OK. So given how much we've expanded in the last period, um, with an influx of that sort of capital, we can definitely take our business to be a $1.25 million company. But that's taking it. 
from your accounting background, you, you know that it's sort of normally businesses are valued at a profit with a multiple of how big that growth is. Correct. Now, I know obviously you can't multiply zero, but um, yeah. $250,000 is a lot of money. So let me, let me just explain to you what $250,000 means. If you think of your, what we would call your profit on this item, yep. you'd be lucky to get a return of 50 cents per unit to your shareholder. It's probably more likely to be 10 cents. So how many do you need to sell at 10 cents profit to return the $250,000 to the investor? You have to sell 2.5 million of them, which is a very, very significant number in a country of our size. Correct. Even if at a $25,000 investment, at a 50%, mm. you know, like really being business partners and mm -hmm. half and half, yep. it's still really hard to get that return. I can't see how I can get a return for what you've asked. So for that reason, I'm out. Thanks. Thanks. I think your product's too expensive. And certainly the retail you're charging it. I'm also someone that hates with a passion anything on belts. When people clip keys on belts, it drives me crazy, and mobile phones on belts, it's just like one of my many, many OCD problems in, <laughs> in, in life. Many, um, many OCD problems. And there's many, there's many. We'll get to more, don't worry. So there's a number of reasons there that it doesn't quite hit the spot for me, so I'm out. Sure, Thanks. thank you. I love the product. I think it's really good. I, and, you know, the other thing I really like about what you guys have done to date is that you've protected the trademark. It's not pending, it's registered. Yep. The valuation is something that is is a long way away from what is, is probably market or reasonable. I'm out. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Peter and Christine, look, I, I, I really like it. I, I, I so want to invest. But the offer I'd have to make you would be, would be, would be ridiculous. You've come out asking for too much money. You've actually set yourself up to not get a deal. Yeah. Yep. So, I wish you all the best. I'm looking forward to seeing it, but I'm out, guys. Yep. Thanks, Steve. I agree, I like the brand, I like the product. Yep. I like this part, the branding, the corporate branding, I think there's big upside. Have you ever taken it to a major company that just specializes in gifts for corporates? No. See, I have a friend. <laughs> we, we like friends. And he runs one of the largest companies that does this in the United States. And I know what his sales are. You've confused something which is understandable, you're new in business. You've confused what you think the business needs, because I agree yeah. with you. I think it needs about a quarter of a million bucks to kickstart it with a valuation. And they are two very different things. Definitely. Correct. So, uh, unfortunately, you have set yourself up uh, in a difficult situation, but you're onto something. The corporate gift market in the US, I think, is a game changer for this. At some stage, you can email me and I can maybe help you open a sales channel okay. in the US. Good luck to you, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Good Thank presentation. Thank well done. Thank you. Bye. Well done. Yeah, so we didn't get an offer, but Andrew showed some promising signs of some contacts that he had in the US, which is a really big market that we want to tap into. I think we can get there. What a shame. I know. You know the revenue of this company in the US, the gift company, is two and a half billion. Next into the tank are Janet and her auntie Annie. They're hoping their unique gadget will tease a deal from a shark. We think that this product is going to be so successful and change so many women's lives. It does have a huge potential to go global. 
Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Janet and this is my auntie and business partner, Annie. And we are HTZ Hair Revolution and we have a product to show you today which is called the HTZ Hot Teas. Our product is about making hair more voluminous. It works by giving texture to the roots of the hair. It's a heated hair appliance, it's very easy to use and it's a fantastic, fast and efficient tool it's been designed um, by Anne herself, who is an experienced hairdresser. Basically, it's used for hair like mine, uh, which would be like that without it. It gives a little bit of texture to the base of the roots. It's not like a crimping iron. A crimping iron is a V shape. It has little square shapes, which is four points of crease instead of two points of crease, which makes it denser and less noticeable. And in my 50 years of hairdressing, nothing has ever given me, because it's very thin, nothing has given me hair that I can go like that and it will just still have body and that's what I've been looking for. What we are looking for from a shark is $500,000 for 5%. Eat. Your request was for $500,000 for 5% valuing your business at $10 million. Wow. Is that correct? That's serious. Yes. That's, that's big and we look forward to seeing it. So would you like to demonstrate your product so yes. that we can see it? Can I do somebody's hair? Would you sure. Like? It's been the, the long, thick hair. Do you get your hair done very often lately or what? Every day. My hair's not going to fall out, is it? <laughs> no. Janet, can I just clarify something? Is this a replacement for a a curling iron or a hair straightener, or is it something completely different? Well, we designed this as a volumizer, and that was solely what it was meant to be. But you can also do your ribbon curls and everything, much like a hair straightener. What are you spraying into our roots? Uh, hair remover. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so with this root lift spray is oh. a light hair spray. So does this come with the product? It comes with a 60 mil version of the root lift spray, which is actually manufactured here in Australia. It doesn't actually feel like it's got anything in it. <laughs> it's a bit scary, isn't it? Oh, dear. OK, no, Let's that get a uh, <laughs> fire extinguisher. Quick, a fire blanket. Bring a fire blanket. <laughs> I can see smoke. So I'm sizzling. There is smoke coming off your head. It's just that I'm not going to wait for the spray to dry. All hot irons do that if you have wet spray. <laughs> Don't laugh. Stop laughing. Can't take you seriously, sorry, Janine. I couldn't take you seriously before getting your hair done. Now getting your hair done, I can't take you seriously at all. What do you sell them for? OK, online we sell them at 2 45 we are trying to encourage people to come and see us at our pop-up shops and our expos and all that sort of thing. So when we do something like that, we do a promo price of $1.95. So a $10 million valuation. So what are your sales to date? Sales to date is 208. 208 units. So then how do you justify the $10 million valuation? So, well, what we've done is, with each pop-up shop, we have sold lots, and we've made our money back. Hang on. Lots. Lots? You've only sold 208. I'm shocked. $10 million valuation is complete garbage. Janet and Annie have invented a gadget that gives hair more volume. But as Janine's locks get bigger, so do the holes in Janet and Annie's business model. So a $10 million valuation, so what are your sales to date? Sales to date is 208. So then how do you justify the $10 million valuation? I'm shocked. 10 million bucks and you've got nothing. You're 208 sales. You're going to be doing pop-up shops the rest of your life to try and justify a $10 million valuation. I just don't understand how I can invest in something which has, you know, you've sold 208 of these and we don't have a business plan and it's a $10 million valuation. It's sort of a bit cheeky, don't you think? Who 
where or what has this valuation come from? Did you do it or did you get help with the valuation? I did get help from um, my friend who's an accountant. Oh God, get a new accountant. So he's basing that on what we assume we'll be doing at... We've got three expos booked for this year already. Janet, he's a bloody idiot. To give you a valuation of $10 million to come into the tank, and you know, you've watched this show, you knew we weren't going to be happy. Yeah, but look how I look. Isn't it worth it? <laughs> I have to say, Janine looks amazing. Do I look like I'm back to the 80s? She looks like Wonder Woman. It's... <laughs> That's what she reminds me of. It's Wonder Woman. It... No, it's, it's voluminous. No, yeah. It's good. It's good. Thank you very much. It's amazing. <laughs> what do you think, Len? Oh, it looks great. Annie and, and, and Janet, look, um, I'm not your ideal customer for this sort of thing. I don't quite understand what it is. But I think you need to seriously look at that $10 million valuation you've stuck in there, because I think you'll come unstuck on that today. I'm out. I, I wish you all the best. Thank you. I, I must admit, it does bother me watching my daughters go and, and go, I'm waiting for the hair to fall out. Hair's very resilient, believe me. Um, I'm worried about the $10 million valuation. Whoever helped you with that has done you a massive disservice. Uh, I'm out. Thank you. You need to work with a company that will make and distribute this for you locally and globally. That's the way to go, not selling it at pop-up stores. And the other thing is, change your accountant, because whoever gave you the $10 million valuation in a way, set you up to fail today. I'm sorry, I wish you luck. You've got a product, keep going, but it's not an investment for me. I'm out. OK, thank you. Do you know what I love about you two? Most people talk about doing something and you've done it. You have bought a product to market. However, you're playing in a very big, scary ocean with big competitors. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? You've come up with a great idea, but you're not necessarily business people, and that's OK. Either was I when I started. I had to learn. So tick, exposure, tick. You've got a great product. Well done. And you're passionate about it, and it's you love it. But the $10 million valuation means it's uninvestable. I'm sorry, I'm out. Thank you. Thanks for the hair. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Annie. I think the root lift spray is amazing. Look at that. It's amazing. It's over. <laughs> we did our best. Yep. Plan A. Plan A. Back to plan A. I think if your husband was watching now, he'd be... <laughs> Very keen to see you, darling. What are you, mon chéri? Uh, oh, you look like that is amazing. <laughs> Next into the tank is Darwin saleswoman Heidi, who's come up with a concept as Australian as the stubby holder. My product is definitely unique. It's something out there that um, should have been invented probably a very long time ago. Every Australian will want one of these if they do enjoy an ice cold drink, because this is going to be beneficial to them. Hi, I'm Heidi, and I'm the owner and inventor of the Ice Bucket Skin. We as Australians do enjoy an ice cold drink, and there's nothing better than sharing a bottle with friends. So whether you're out at a venue or at home, to keep the bottle icy cold, we use ice buckets. The problem with the ice buckets is the condensation. Pools all over the table can end up on the floor, which is an OH&S risk. Worst case scenario could be someone slipping over from water on the floor. So I've invented the ice bucket skin. It is made from a material that is 0.002% impervious to water, thus ridding the condensation problem. The best thing about it after that, though, is it's also available to logo up. So you can have logos, advertising, patterns and designs to appeal to the marketplace out there. Everyone in the home has a stubby cooler. 
The next thing they'll have at home is going to be the ice bucket skin. So I'm asking for $260,000 for 10% of my business. No. I can sell ice to Eskimos, so I know I can sell this product. So what I need is funding and also your expertise to get this to Australia, and then it will go to the world. OK. Thanks very much, Heidi. Uh, g'day, I'm Steve. How are you doing? Good, thanks, Steve. Um, and so you're looking for $260,000 for 10%? Yes. 2.6 million bucks. Right, we'll get into that a bit later, but what, what, uh, what do you do at the moment? You've got a, a job currently? Yes, I'm a full-time job in Darwin and office work at the moment. Um, my background is sales, though. What sort of sales? Um, I was actually the first female car salesperson in Darwin. Ooh. The first female car ago. sales person in Darwin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Well done. So what made you think that I have to solve the condensation on the ice bucket problem? Because not everyone wakes up in the morning and says, <laughs> I have to solve the condensation on the ice bucket problem, right? <laughs> I mean, it's something that's out there that I don't think anyone's actually realised is a problem. So for me going out and enjoying a drink with friends, I sit at a bar or at a table at a restaurant, the ice bucket's in the middle of the table, the water's pooling, it ends up in my lap. Right, so is it actually a problem? <laughs> yes, it is a problem. Well, we'll know if it's a problem if the people in the hotels actually want it. Yes. So what have they said? I've had nothing but fantastic reviews for the product. So I have basically got about 10 venues in Darwin that have been using it, and I've spoken to the publican on many occasions, and he is quite in awe of it. Hmm. So Heidi, um, this is your invention. Yes. So what have you done to protect it? Um, so I have a patent on it. OK. What's the patent over? The patent is money for the material it's made from. Surely there's prior art that's similar to cover a bucket out there. Someone out can go out there and make another, like a stubby cooler skin for an ice bucket out of neoprene or something like that. Mm -hmm. But out of this material here that I've chosen, EVA... Oh, I think that paint attorney has done you a massive disservice. And all paint attorneys out there, stop it! <laughs> for God's sake, stop ripping off entrepreneurs. You can't paint in simple shit. How much did he charge you for it? Um, I just went online and did it. It was under five hundred dollars. You did it paint. yourself. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, paint attorneys. That's well done. <laughs> You've done so well. <laughs> so, how many have you sold? I had a thousand of them made from China. Brought them into Darwin. So you ordered a thousand before you tried and tested the product. I had tried and tested my prototypes at home. Right. But I ordered a thousand in because I wanted to get them into some venues and see how they went. So how many of the thousand have you sold? I only sold 200 of them. OK. And about 100 actually given away as well. Oh. So you've got 700 left in stock? Yes. Heidi, I get that you want some help, but how do you value your business at 2.6 million when you've sold 100, given away 100, <laughs> it's been going two years and you've still got seven in stock? I mean, I mean, is there some magic formula to this? Is there something we're not seeing? The magic formula hasn't happened yet because what's happened is... Please explain. I had to have it tried and tested first. So in my head, I knew that this product was saleable and that I was confident yes, selling it. Yes, the 2.6 million I'm yep, talking about. Yeah, the 2.6 million. So I've been to an accountant. Oh, no. No, no, no. And All he's right. actually drawn oh, up my well. figures. Oh, don't do it. That changes everything. No, but I had to have him work out figures. He said to me, um, basically, um, I can sell at least 100,000 in the first year. So, Heidi, I'm still waiting for the justification of the 2.6 million valuation because you did your spreadsheet with your accountant. Yep. But do you have a purchase order? No, I don't. It's, you've got so many there you could have sold already. When someone says to you, business is worth 2.6 million, and I don't have really a firm purchase order. That's correct, Surely, yeah. if you have this screaming voice that says to you, that sounds like bullshit. OK. <laughs> so why do you think you will sell 100,000? Because it's something that is unique to the market that I know once I get out there and start actually selling the product. And to sell it door to door and individual to pubs and clubs is basically out of the question. It's too much for me to do. When you're an entrepreneur and when you're starting a business, nothing is too much. OK. The reality is what great entrepreneurs do is race around Australia, lock in all the pubs and clubs that are interested in this product. Next thing, you've got an open order for at least 
10,000 of them, yes. job's done, and you're going to have a nice profit margin. Who was the accountant? Is it a suburban accountant, or is it one of the big... big... He's from a worldwide firm. All right, here's a message to those pillocks. Please stop giving unrealistic valuations to entrepreneurs. Get real with your bloody valuations. On that, Heidi... Yes? I'm going to actually declare myself out. Uh, I wish you all the best, and have a good day. No worries. You're a classic entrepreneur, got excited, lots of activity without any execution. There is a point in life where you come to where you figure you're ready to do something, and that's the point I'm at now. The last couple of years have been thinking about the product, inventing the product, getting it made, then making sure the product will work. OK, good. It's now my time. You know, a lot of people go have an idea and they spend their whole life having an idea and never doing something about it. So you're right, it's your time. Yes. You've just started on your journey, your business journey. You don't know yet what you don't know, but your accountant has done you a disservice. You know, because you've relied on him as an expert to give you advice and he has given you terrible advice. Terrible. He has made this pitch today for you uninvestable. I'm sorry I'm out. OK. You've come up with a with a really cracking idea. There's some things that aren't quite working, but so so tell me, how much money have you put into this? Not a lot. Okay. Um, I've only spent probably over ten thousand dollars, so I have not invested a lot of money. But you're after us to invest a lot of money. I know, but you're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> You see, often people come and ask for our money as investors, and yet they don't put their hand in their own pocket and they wouldn't risk their own capital. You've invested $10,000, but would you invest 2.6 million in this? Um, you know, I would have to do a lot of work. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of work too. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the point. You know, when somebody comes before us and they won't spend their own money, but they're happy to spend ours, it's not the way I want to start a partnership. Yeah. It's not an investment for me. I'm out. OK, thank you. So three sharks are out. You've got two sharks left. I actually love the product. I think it, without any branding on it, it looks very smart sitting on a restaurant table. Yes. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the product. So, so yeah. you know, you've done... Uh, fabulous. And you've yeah. had this innovation. You've got it up. Well done. Because that's hard. If you'd turned up on this show with purchase orders, for $260,000, I would have been actually interested. You've turned up the day with a great product, but I'm not ready to put my money into your business. I'm out. OK. If you believe someone who gives you a valuation of 2.6 million, then I would worry about you as a business partner because, frankly, it's a ludicrous valuation. I just find it a little bit kind of uh, hard to grasp. I'm out. OK. Good luck, Heidi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for coming to Shark Tank. All right, no worries. See you later. See you. I guess I do have a lot more to learn. I am a salesperson, I'm not a business person, so I need to get a business hat on. I, I took on Steve's persona then, didn't I? I was getting very frustrated. You were getting quite grumpy, Andrew. Grumpy, Andrew. But we got, didn't get grumpy at her, we got grumpy at the situation. Watch this space, you'll be seeing my product out there. Next up, before the hungry sharks, is a young woman from Byron Bay who believes her tasty business will help us all start the week off well. Hi, I'm Indy. I'm here to introduce my business, The Monday Food Co. With baked paleo granola. I'm asking for 300,000 for 25% of my company. My granola, I feel, is different from other granolas on the market. I hand make it in Byron Bay. It's paleo, gluten-free, dairy-free, grain-free, refined sugar-free, made with local honey and with love. At the moment, I stock four flavours and my fifth flavour coming out is hazelnut, chocolate and cherry. Yeah. <laughs> I turned over 149,000 in my first year and doubled it in my second year. 
I stock it currently in around 800 stores around Australia. I'm coming on the show today to ask for the money so that I can outsource manufacturing and expand international. Okay, Indy, so that's $300,000 for 25%. So yeah. you're valuing your company at 1.2 million. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How did you get to cereal and paleo granola? I started making the paleo granola at home and all of my friends tasted it and people were just like, why don't you just sell this? And I just thought, yeah, okay, I will. This is seriously the best granola I've had. I was transported to a health farm in Byron Bay as I ate it. It was amazing. Thank He's you. made an offer for my bowl. <laughs> you said you make it by hand, but you also said you're in 800 stores. Yes. Have you nothing else in your life <laughs> but making? Well, that's actually why I'm here. Um, I still do all of the packing, half of the baking, and I, I mix all of the product but I'm getting to a stage where I am getting too big and I just can't keep on physically working 80 hours. So the next step is obviously externally, externalising yep. it. Yep. How, have you looked into that? Can no. You tell? Right. Wow. Why not? Um, I mean, you Google, you speak to people, you just start to research and find it. I'm not very good at... Um, Googling? Computer stuff. Uh, oh, what? I've tried to look into it, but not been successful so far. It's yeah. such an important part of business. So yeah. why do you find that side so hard? Um, I'm dyslexic. Uh. I've got to tell you, many successful people in the world are dyslexic. Yes, I think we're just really hands-on people. My sister's helped me a lot. So any paperwork I get, I email it onto her and she fills it out for me or anything I feel confused about. The business side does need to be sharpened and that's not my area, that's why I am here. So what do you make it for, what do you, what do you sell it for? Okay, so it costs me at the moment $5.15 to make oh. per bag. Per bag. I sell it to the distributors for $8.20 and then you would put it on the shelf for in between $14.95 to $16.95. So Indy, um, on 300000 bucks. Yes. You, you're making gross margin of about half that, about 150. Is that about right? Well, I profited this year um, 56,000. Is it after you paid yourself? Yes. Okay. You, you, you've made a, a, an actually massive mistake today. You've asked for 300 thousand dollars on a really small business. Okay. I wish you all the best, uh, Indy, but I'm out. Thank you. I have never heard of a food business being valued at four times revenue. So, I'm so sorry. That's okay. But I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> I think where you need right now is a business partner, someone who has that logistical side and the accounting side. That's what I'd be looking for. So, okay. but as an investor, I'm out. Okay, thank you. I love this product and I, unlike Steve, you know, I like to work my insides as well as my outsides every day. <laughs> Excuse my yeah, graphics, so much but it may be too much information, but this, this is a fantastic product. I'm a bit with Janine. I actually am not sure you need money. I actually think you need a partner. I'm not that partner for you. Yep. I wish you well, but Thank I'm you. out. Thank you. You're completely in control of quality right now. Yes. In fact, you make it. Yes. So if we're going to scale this up and go commercial kitchens and contract manufacturing, how are we going to control that? Well, I would really want to go into the manufacturer and set it up and be there for the first few months to make sure it is that quality control. The quality is what sells it. Agree entirely. You've got one taste opportunity. Exactly. But at the end of the day, any business, it's all about for an investor the dividend or the profit that's coming out the bottom. Yep. I'm trying to value your business because I know you need the money to expand. Yes. I'm just struggling a lot. Indy from Northern New South Wales has been making all her paleo granola by hand. This is seriously the best granola I've had. She's asked for $300,000 for a 25% stake to help outsource manufacturing. Even though her product is tasty, yep. Indy's business proposal hasn't even had a nibble. So I'm trying to value your business so I can make you an offer. I'm just struggling a lot. I'm 
I'm going to throw an offer at you because okay. I've done the work based on the numbers you've told me today. Yep. And I'm hoping there's growth and I'm hoping those forecasts might happen. But it's nowhere near your 1.2 million. Okay. The offer today is $100,000 yep. for 40% plus a $200,000 loan at commercial terms to support your growth and get into contract manufacturing. So it's giving you the money you need to expand. At the same time, I get enough equity to get seriously interested in what you're up on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And I do know your product, by the way, because it's, uh, it's in our organic supermarkets already. Oh, great. Thank you. So you came here looking for 300,000 for 25%. You're going to sell 40% with his offer. But he's going to lend you $200,000, which the business has to pay back. What are you thinking? Could I ask my sister? She's here. Yeah. Can you step outside? Yeah. yeah. Step outside and have a think. Okay. You should have given her all the cash for 60%. I, I, I didn't want to do that to her because... She, she needs someone to run the this, show, right? This product is an extension of her. It's her. <laughs> okay. That's what they say. So, Glenn offered me... Um, 100,000 for 40% of the business and $200,000 loan. I mean, there are some differences in there, obviously, but you're selling him a bigger percent and you are loaning some, so you're paying money back. Yeah. At 60%, she will feel she's lost control, whereas at 40%, I think I can influence her through just business logic and hopefully she's smart enough to listen. This is my sister, Shelley. Ah, the Hi. sister, the mysterious sister. Well, welcome to Shark Tank. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Shelley, what do you think of your sister and what she's done so far? I'm so proud of her. And how much are you involved? What do you do in the business? Very little. She overestimates the amount that I have done for her. Quite a few times she said, you know, I want you involved, I want you more involved. But I've been standoffish because I want her to see that she can do this by herself and she's already gotten this far by herself. OK, Indy, what are you going to do? I just want to say thank you all for letting me talk and thank you for your offer. Um, but I was wondering, do you feel that you could help me with the logistics side? Yes. OK, great. That's what I want. I'm really happy then. Good deal. Congratulations. Well done, partner. Yes. Good job. <laughs> well done. You did it, Indy. You did it. You did it. Good job. Woohoo! Well done. Hey. Woo Amazing. You had to give away a big chunk of your business, 40%. Are you OK with that? I'm OK with that. I need that kind of expertise on the team. And if I was to keep it myself, I could probably never grow it as big as what we can grow it together. Look at this, Glenn. OK, so this is a bootstrapping business. Put the money on the table. Absolutely. <laughs> she said we've got to move this. some. She said there's plenty I'm 40, there. You I'm her 40% partner. Put the money on the table. <laughs> it's so fantastic, though. Next to break the shark tank, an entrepreneur hoping to move his family business into the big league. If I got investment today from the sharks, it would, it would basically push us forward much, much faster than we would have otherwise. Hi there, Sharks. My name's Dean Salakis, and I'm the chief party dude of the party people. I'm looking for a shark to come to the party with $400,000 for 5% of my company. It all began 30 years ago with my mum, who was Patches the Clown, catering for kids' parties all over Sydney. Her passion for kids' parties led her to open a small little party shop with my grandfather. Seven years ago, my brother and I took over the family business so that my mum and grandfather could retire. Our operation consists of an internet business and two retail stores. Our Dremoyne store opened about three years ago and sales in its first year were about a million dollars. Since then, we've been growing at about 20% and this is a type of success we'd like to replicate to create a national chain of party stores. 
In the party supplies industry, there's no top of mind party supplies retailer. And I believe the party people is in the perfect position to take this opportunity and create a national chain of party stores. I've got the best job in the world. I get to have fun every day, it's exciting, and I get to help people create the parties that they dreamed about. So who wants the party? <laughs> oh, I, knew, I knew something was going on. Right. Whoa. It was Evelyn. Surprise. Oh, you got left out. Sorry, Sorry Steve. Oh, happy we're out. <laughs> Would you like some stuff inside each of these? Do we get to keep it if we invest you or do. not, Dean? That's the question. You get to keep it either Thanks, way, actually. You can, keep the, you can keep what's in the box. <laughs> Do I have to wear the coconut bikini top? Just check it. Option, option. Right, OK. John reminds me of the tax department. <laughs> I've given John a money bag. Actually, John's got a money bag. It's empty, though. That's the problem. Oh. Hey. He wants you to fill it up. That's the point. And how did you know Naomi was our princess? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky guess. Who owns the company, Mark? Dean? Uh, I own 50%. Uh, and my yeah. brother owns the other 50%. Oh, no, 50-50. So $400,000 for 5%, that's the value proposition? Yes. A big valuation. Yeah. I mean, if you're asking an $8 million valuation, you must be earning plenty of revenue and profit. Total revenue is about $4.1 last year. Um, our profit is around about $400,000. So it, you, you made $400,000 before tax last year. Yes. What are you going to make next year? because that's how I'm going to value your business. Next year, we should um, make around about 450,000 profit. What, what, only 10% more than this year? Sorry, sorry, about 500, sorry, about 20%. So why are you worth 30 times this year's numbers? Um, so you're asking why are we valuing it at, say, yeah. 8 million, for example. Um, I think it's a really good business. I think we're ready to explode, and I think that, you know, we've, we've laid the foundation, basically, to, to, to scale this yeah, thing. Yeah, but even still, if you, if, you look at your, if you look at next year with investment, you'll be doing 600K. That's net profit yeah. before tax. Yeah. You pay the tax man, so you're left with 400K. Yeah. So then you're valued at 20 times. That's, that's a big lick. This is a great business, don't get me wrong, but yeah. this valuation needs to be inspected and looked at quite hard. You do sound very good at running a party shop. Thank you, you. appreciate that. Fundamentally, I'm just, I'm failed to get excited about the party business. I'm gonna say I'm out so you can concentrate on the others because well, I just can't get excited, so I'm out, mate. No worries. You wanna raise $400,000? Yep. What are you gonna do with it? We're all a little interested in how you think you're gonna expand the business and get the best return on that equity investment. Yeah, that's a really good question because we've only got two stores and we're running a business which is really set for 10 stores. Our website, we have customers in Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth, that, that basically want, you know, they wish we had a store there, but we don't. So we don't need to do any more marketing. We've already got the marketing. We're already ma ad advertising to these people that go, OK, I found the party people. Oh, they're not here. So coming back to the question, where yeah. do you think you're going to spend the money? Oh, opening more stores. You're heading down the old bricks and mortar. And I think the internet for everything nowadays is really the future. So for me, I think you're actually potentially going down the wrong track. But that's can my I just, view. Can I just jump in if that's all right? I mean, when you, when you organise a party, it's more visual. It's, it's almost like design, you know? You want to you wanna go into a store and pick stuff and have fun with it and enjoy the experience. And I think that's where the opportunity is. Right. I think every time we open a store, we will add 700 to a $1 million worth of turnover for every store we open, basically. Right. And another 100 or 150 to $200,000 yeah. worth of profit for every store okay. we open. What I am concerned about is the 5% your expectations for 5% are just way too high. And you've asked for a lot of money. Yes. I'm out. Yes. Thanks, Naomi. I don't know where you're getting your advice or guidance. Nowhere. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and that's frankly how it comes across. Now, you can fix that. I, I think you could be on the verge of greatness. But from an investment point of view, 
It's too much money for too little percentage and, and a very sort of ill-defined return on my investment. Yeah. So I wish you well, but I'm out. Appreciate that. $4 million is good revenue. Mm -hmm. That's the positive. Yes. Um, the rest of it for me, to be quite honest, is not so positive. $8 million is a totally absurd valuation for your business. I'm sorry, but that's okay. the only word I can think of. I don't see this business being worth $8 million today. I don't see this business being worth $8 million in a decade. So I'm out. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Janine? You know, the answer that you gave Steve for the valuation, which was, it is a good business, so it's worth $8 million. Mm. What I would have liked to have heard was, I've done some research into the industry and similar businesses have a multiple of 15, so this is about right. And for me, valuing a business, I look at the profit, yeah. I look at the growth profile, and I put a multiple connected to that growth profile as well as considering the industry standards. So for me, the business is valued around $2 million. Can you come back to me with another offer? She's asking you to negotiate against yourself. How yeah. good is that? Um, well, she's got it because the valuation's ridiculous. Uh, I'd be happy to move to, say, 10%. So $400,000 for 10%? Yep. So four mil val. That's the best I can it's do. That's the best you can do? That's the best I can do. I'm stretching it there. Partners with Janine Ellis. I mean, just think about that one for a second. Forget the equity part. Honestly, just consider what's being brought to the table here, all right? Dean Salakis wants $400,000 for 5% of his party supplies business. Four sharks have left the party. Janine is interested but she wants a much bigger piece of the cake. I'd be happy to move to, say, 10%. So $400,000 for 10%? Yep. So four mil val. That's the best I can it's do. It's the best you can do? That's the best I can do. I'm stretching it there. Partners with Janine Ellis. I mean, just think about that one for a second. Forget the equity part. Honestly, just consider what's being brought to the table here, all right? Look, I'm sort of squeezing numbers around, but I just, everything I'm looking at is so far away from your valuation. All the ways I was getting the cat was a valuation of two million. Okay. I, I don't think it's anywhere near four. And also for me, 10%'s not enough as well. I'd really love to work with you. At 10%. No, I'm out. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for coming. Dean, thank so you very much. much. Good luck to you. Good thank luck, you. Mike. Cheers. Dodge the bullet. Yeah, but the, the sales are good. Yeah. The return oh, the store the was is really good. He had growth on sales, so it's a growing business. It had it ticked a lot of boxes.